In this video, you're gonna watch us build a billion dollar business. We're finally gonna tell you what it is and why it's something that every person in business won't be able to live without. You're actually damaging your reputation. We wanna help you not do that. If you wanna see how $180 million founders build their next venture, you don't wanna miss this episode. I think it's important to think about the context of like, who's gonna be using it, right? Keep living your life. Yep. I think what people want yep. is what the fuck are you building? Yeah. <laughs> All right, what is it, Jarko? Okay, let's do it. All right, I'm just sitting here waiting to be picked up. It's currently 6.18 in the morning. This week, we've really realized we're gonna need some geniuses to get this product sorted. So we're looking to increase our intellectual horsepower. I've forgotten how hard it is in the early days of a startup and how many different things you've gotta be across at one time. You have gotta be across all of the branding. You have gotta know all of the marketing plans. You have gotta be across all of the hiring, spinning so many plates at one time. And I've really forgotten what that can be like. It can be so chaotic at, at times. So let's get into the office, get stuck into it. Gonna be a good day. This is our daily. <laughs> Things have been heating up here at Founders Table. We've been um, on a pretty aggressive uh, run of hiring team members, getting some amazing talent, building out our product. But over the last six months, um, for us, it's all been about building intrigue, getting people curious you know, what are they building? <laughs> and I think we've successfully achieved that, but I think it's time to share what we're actually doing. Uh, if you, oh yeah, Pam. Should I sit here? Yeah. So what are we building? So what are we building? We're building an AI voice first assistant for high performing business people. All of my decision making as a business person stems from the people that I know in my network. All right, cool. So to break it down, I think we need to work on these four things. Firstly, who are we building this for? Um, we are founders and we have the ear of founders. Just because they own a business doesn't mean that someone else doesn't have a similar problem. Yeah, I think it's the type of person who values a network. You could be a founder, but you're so deep in your business that you don't have time to broaden your network. You don't have time to nurture your network. You could be a employee in a corporate dealing with really, really important people, really, really important tasks all the time. And it would be incredibly useful for you. So you've got like the founder who cares about network and broadening the network and strengthening the core relationships. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the well, the high performance individual, the business individual. Your networks go so far and, and wide. Now when you're going to look for employees, you're going to look for opportunities, it's just right there in front of you. That's the kind of person that I'd say is like, yep, this makes complete sense for me. Then it's like, what is the problem set? <laughs> the problem you have when you're in business you have things like LinkedIn, where you have 10,000 connections you've never met. Yep. But who really matters for your business is like 20 or 30 people. Messaging apps don't prioritize people based on their importance to you. Seven, eight different channels where someone from business or some person, some contact can message you. That platform does not care about that person's importance to you, right? I've got DMs in Instagram from a billionaire that's looked at the same light as some random scam artist that's DMing me as well. The other problem, you just want to brain dump what you've got, what you need done, and you want it just to be understood. I just want to either speak to it or give it quick, a quick input and it just gets sorted. One of the challenges is you, you, you see something like Siri, but it's like one by one going through messages or WhatsApp. Like it's actually not like understanding context, it's just doing voice. Yeah. You want the, the feeling that you're actually talking to someone who can then go and work through the problems rather than just like hear the exact words you have verbatim. Yeah. There's a calendar app that just says there's no, there's no space. Mm. But there is space, it's just that it's taken yeah. up by someone that you could move on to yeah. another day. Yeah. It doesn't understand that that's now blocking some really important yeah. potential event that's super, super time sensitive. Then once we've identified the problems, then we can start working on the features. So if we start with the... <laughs>
the ability to easily put notes against those contacts. Yeah. And everything is like, we're thinking about a voice first. And then we do, when you put in a contact and you add the information, we have the public data that we enrich there. So we use AI to enrich the public. That can be everything. queried at a search level, but not at a visibility level. Yeah, perfect. And then like the ability, like similar to how AI is working today, which is like, you're just using plain text and having a conversation with it. You're, you're able to actually like query your contacts. Uh, who do I know that's in the tech space? Yep. Or who do I know that might have UI UX people? And it's using all that public information. It's like, oh, well, this, these people in your contacts have a tech company. They're likely going to be able to have UI UX people. So that's a contact. And then with the aggregated messaging, so taking WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, TikTok, all of the different messaging platforms, passing them through like who is most important to you. And so you have a centralized place to actually be able to respond back to the messages. Are there fires to put out? Are there yeah. time sensitive yeah. things? Rather than scrolling through each one of those apps individually, how can we help you go like, okay, here's the three things you need to do before breakfast. Can we give you like a little daily run sheet of what's important, summarized across all of the channels and you get a basically a wake up message. And then once we have that, we can then start to kind of map out what's the, the look and feel. We're gonna start off with we're gonna mobile first. How can we make it so easy for a user to activate speaking with the AI that it becomes a natural reaction? Click a button or you flip something up, activated voice or text. So it needs to sit really, really seamlessly on top of your existing phone, which is like your contacts, the way that everything looks. We don't wanna to be too colorful. We don't wanna to be too techy. We don't wanna look like another SaaS platform. We don't wanna have a barrage of icons, menus, anything that can overwhelm you. Really, really smart with the way that we handle notifications that they are perfectly timed, actually provide value and not just tell you that you're gonna have a walk with your wife at seven o'clock in the morning. The whole way we go through the process is like, does that extra button or extra page need to exist and how can we do it without? Yep. In episode two, the B store I thought could be our sale that we did and sold. But how long are you talking about what we built for? Oh, I don't know, at least five, six minutes. What the F? Where have you been, bro? There's no only problem about when you're on your computer. I was, That's what, rogue. What, what did you? I thought it'd be like a minute or two. How Max? are you going to create no, the no. real hub context from our storyline? Because you got the services business and you got to merge and then you got a thing. If you can do that in a minute and 20, I will give you, I don't know, 10 bucks. Yeah, I just want to get to the point of like building this new one, not talking about real hub services. Like cognitive overload. Why do you care about services? But I guess it's important that you know this. I think when I reflect on my journey through building a business, it really is in those stages. When we first started, I was 20 years old. I literally had no idea what I was doing. What was most important for me was having Jacques and Ken, having the older brothers that I looked up to and seeing how they worked each and every day and, and pushing myself to be like, they were infinitely smarter than me. So like, how do I level up my skills? But we always had this kind of like entrepreneurial spirit. We were always just hustling, doing random things. I said to Abby, let's sell our apartment. Let's sell our cars. We're going to go all in on this random idea to do our own business. We're going to call it Real Hub. And she said, sure, that's no problem. Let's do it. In this video, I have some incredibly exciting news that as of today, it's been officially announced that Domain has acquired Realbase. The business started really simply. I think looking back, a lot of people say like, wow, how did you map it all out? What was the chess game you played? It couldn't have been simpler. The idea was installing signboards and printing brochures. We ran that business together till about 2015. Back in those days when they wanted brochures that have to call up to tell us the amount of quantity that they wanted. There wasn't even a button to tell us the quantity. And there came a point in the time where Ken, he decided we needed to build our own ordering platform. Photography, brochures, signboards, realestate.com, domain. And we were creating a place that aggregated all of those suppliers and created a smooth experience for the real estate agents. Things are going amazing. We were growing year on year. The team was growing. We had about a team of about 40 to 50 people at this point. Business was really starting to kick goals. All across Australia, we'd integrated multiple suppliers. Things were going fantastic. And then... There's confirmation the coronavirus has reached Australia. As we go to air, there is one confirmed case in Melbourne. Authorities warn it's highly likely there'll be more cases. COVID hit and our business dropped by 90%. Our revenue was decimated. What we decided to do in that moment was something that was like the most defining career moment for us is we just started swinging for the fences. 
um, and that was enough to get the attention of our biggest competitor. One day, the CEO of that business, of Campaign Track, walked through the door and they offered us a merger. Frank went to a couple of meetings with them, and I love this so much, he just sacked up and said, I have two requirements. Number one, it has to be 50-50. Even though they were eight times the size of us in revenue, they were doing about $33 million, I knew that going into a merger, if there was a power imbalance, it was never gonna work. And my second requirement was, it has to be fast. And by the end of 2020, we were merged and we're in the same office, and that was when we kicked off RealBase. And after a 12-month process, that's when we sold to domain.com.au for 180 mil. Yeah, what are you thinking? Why don't we raise some capital? 